And we're live. Good morning, everybody. I am here to have some fun. Very excited for today. We have lots to talk about and lots to do. We're going to do some readings, as promised. But before that, I've got a friend here who is going to be my guest. And of course, here's Leslie Williams. Hi, Leslie. Um, we can always count on Leslie being here first. Um, so today, we're going to do some readings. I know that there was someone that was going to do um, her, we didn't get to do her cat or something. Anyway, you, you'll you know who it is. Um, I'm going to plunge the coffee now. It's that time. And I, you know, think cups are like oracle cards, so I'm just going to have exotic animals, a, cu a cup that Aunt Barb gave me. But my friend... Christina, who you'll meet in a moment, is going to um, have coffee out of I Run on Caffeine, Horses, and Cuss Words, which is the story of our lives. So anyway, um, I want to welcome everybody, and I would um, love to share what's coming up. We have so many things coming up, and... Um, We've got the virtual retreat that starts on Friday night and goes Friday night, Saturday, Sunday. And Friday night we'll be talking about um, animal, like the energy field of our household, energy fields, how animal communication and energy healing come together, what it is, uh, what fun it is, how to create harmony, all of those things. And then um, the other... Saturday will be like a little mini animal communication boot camp, if you will. And um, that will be very fun. And then we've got Sunday, we learn the scalar wave. So it's very important that everybody on the planet starts to learn the scalar wave because that's how we're going to create a morphic resonance that's so delicious that we have to create world peace and ease for animals, right? So that's where we're going. And we know that the mission here within this group is to help 22 million animals this year. And between that first series we did of the um, how to help animals and what we're doing now, individual animals, the school is doing with the rescue calls, the sanctuary calls, and all of, all of the things that we're doing in the school alone, um, we're really creating a culture that we could easily help 22 million animals and we can up that tenfold for next year. So um, we've got, let's see, what else do we have coming up? So I've got a bunch of summer webinars planned. Yes, you heard it here. Um, so Shannon knows the dates on those. I know the dates, they're over there in my, no, don't even, yeah, I it would, it's scribble, you'd never find it. But I can read my scribble, but thank you. <laughs> um, so we've got lots of webinars coming up this summer, and then uh, we don't have school per se. We, we're out of classes for um, the, oh, there goes a beautiful hawk, um, squirrel. Uh, we have no classes from August 1st or kind of end of July until mid-September, and it's a time for people in the program to really get their homework done, and I know that Susie Reed is here, and she just sent me her graduation documents. Jill Todd sent me her graduation documents today. I mean, people are getting stuff done, so I've got a lot of appointments to make. Um, anyway, uh, so it's time for people in the school to do their case studies, and it's a time for us to regroup. We, we're not off just because the school is off, um, so and then for those here in the group, we're gonna keep going in the Learn to Communicate page here um, with lots of fun things. And um, Claudia, do you wanna share who's here? I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I've got a wound that I'm gonna to tend to. I just soaked my foot. I broke some glass and um, I got out of the room quickly enough, I thought, and I put shoes on, got all the animals out, mop, swept, mopped, swept, mopped. Next day, swept, mopped. Next day, swept, mopped. 
somehow I got a piece of glass embedded in my foot. So I just did Epsom salts again. And now I'm doing Dynamite's Miracle Clay to suck this out, people. Sucking it out and, um, whoa, crazy with the cheese whiz, right? It's kind of like a <laughs> cheese whiz. Yeah, and then I'm gonna wrap my foot because that's what we horse people do. We just wrap everything. So, I know. Okay, so, um, we said hi to Leslie. Uh, Claire Trost says good morning. Good morning, Claire. Pleasure. She said, I would love if you were happy. I would love if you were happy to connect with Cleo, a beautiful cat I love and lost several years back. So, I have you on the list, Claire. Michael Hofferbert says, I love your Oracle mugs. Good morning. Hi, Michael. You know, Michael's my old friend from Seattle from, like, I think I was 17. We were oh, at... Wow. We were actors together. Very cool. Yeah. Um, Shannon Meyer says, hello, I'd love to relate to the mug. With the, I live off of coffee, was it? Horses and cuss words, yeah. Yeah. I think that's the one, Shannon. Yeah. Um, Lori, or are you an exotic animal? What's it? Uh, Lori jo Jodar. Step two. Says, Hi, Lori. Lori's going to Kenya. Whatever. Claudia wants to go to Kenya. Susie Reed says, hello, you look so beautiful. Yeah, John, that uh, color is better on you. Thank you. You should have seen it. It was like, it was a countdown because it was, the new truck is going to get a tow package and still got the hike in and, and, and. So it was a, it was wow. a morning. Uh-oh. My wrap just fell. Hold on. Keep going. Okay. Good morning, Tanya. Um, Barbara Royal says, for, hi, Barbara. First time. Hi, Barbara. I'm to watch the Joan Live. Looking forward to today's session. Um, Are there scissors over there? Wait, who else graduated? Susie's, gra thank you. Susie graduated? Congratulations. She just sent me all her case studies. Wow, Susie. Yay. So Jill and Susie. Yeah, that's very cool. I tell, you know what, I, I have to just take a moment. But, um, I was talking to a student uh, who already graduated, uh, Cass Del Castillo, and she told me that she was turning in her paperwork, and I told her I had finished and I graduated, and she, I said, it's, it's going to feel so much better than you. It's like, it's weird, right? Like, you, you know you're done. But then as soon as you turn in all your stuff, it's like, oh my God. Right? Yeah. It's, 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 it's um, pretty amazing. And she was like, you were right. It is amazing once you're like officially done. Yeah, and Cass and I did it in person, so it was really fun. Oh, whatever. Yeah. yeah, whatever, whoever. <laughs> I know. Um. Okay, um, let me see, let me go back, get back on track, squirrel. Okay. Uh, <laughs> Julie Jacobs says, hi, all. Hi, Julie. Julie. Uh, Denise Nestle, ha okay, Denise, I'm putting you down for a question for your dog. Okay, so if you want Joan to read your animal, these are the things I require that we need. We need the name of the animal, what breed it is, not breed, what cat, dog, oh, yeah, what breed. Species. Or species. Uh, how old the animal is, how long you've had the animal in your house, and who else lives in the home. Come on, Am Henry. Am I missing anything? Mm-mm. Okay. Henry's talking up a storm. Okay. Oh, there he is. Did you see him? Oh, yeah, there he is. He's in the cat tree. Cute cat butt. Uh-huh. Uh, so, he says, uh, if she'd like to ask a question, if time allows, um, of her... Uh, Darby, oh yeah, uh, we've had maybe Denise can share a little bit afterwards in this thread where we've um, where we've gone with Darby because that's pretty amazing. Okay. Um, I'll just go ahead now. I'll let her type it in. So um, okay, let's see. Um, and then if you're new to me, my name is Joan Ranquet. I'm an animal communicator, author, TEDx speaker and founder of Communication with All Life University, which is a program for people to learn animal communication or become an animal communicator, learn energy healer, healing, 
or become an energy healer uh, and to learn about nature and wildlife. And we've also got now this whole animal ambassadorship, which is uh, rescue, uh, working with rescues, sanctuaries. We're going to start working with lab animals, working with uh, professional animals and working with um, zoos wild, and wildlife rehab centers. So we were really, as a school, we are in a big expansion. Um, and so anyway, it's a very, very, very exciting time to be part of the school. And um, we also, so again, the virtual retreat is this weekend. If you haven't signed up, it's gonna be intimate, fun. We're gonna get to know each other. It's gonna be very rich. Um, we've got, the fall intensive coming up and it's not too early to start thinking about that. Um, we've got the animal communication for three days, the death dying and beyond for three days, and then the animal uh, energy healing for animals where we really go into energy fields and holding space and uh, the scalar wave. We do it in person, we do it uh, remotely, we do it on ourselves, we do it with partners. I mean, it's just uh, all things chakras scalar wave and energy healing so that's a very fun fun class um and am i missing anything webinars galore webinars galore um which i haven't even told you when they are but um october intensive and then the uh, october end of october is the animal communication level one and then the energy November. healing in November, energy healing level one. And um, then also we are, I, I'm just gonna spill the beans. Shannon's probably gonna kill me, but um, we are putting together, uh, I think a 10 week class called Animals in Transition. Eventually it's gonna be a whole certification, but for those that have wanted to just talk to animals that have crossed over, or we could even do somebody's animal that's in a stage of crossing over, but it'll be mostly a mediumship class, if you will, um, starting in September. And it's going to be very, very powerful. And eventually that will be its own little um, certification. We'll have another class in the um, winter uh, that will really be animals in transition. And it will be... Um, state of grace, holding space, just all doing scalar, tapping with your client, or if it, it could be even for you. It could be something for yourself. So those are gonna be Wednesday at one. The prerequisite is animal communication level one. So if, or the intensive, or even if you met me in Houston and did a class, or uh, Boston, or Seattle, or if you came to the Northwest School of Animal Massage and took that class, or you're coming to the virtual retreat. So um, uh, again, anybody can reach out to Shannon at info at joanranquette.com with any of your questions. Um, and that's, that's it. Claudia, anything else? So I'm gonna introduce a guest and then we're gonna talk to some animals. Um, I just wanted to say, I, I see someone who I haven't seen her before and I just wanted to do a little quick shout out. Uh, please excuse me if I butcher your name and I apologize. The Manji Kulkarni uh, says, That's Hi, Joan. Pretty good. <laughs> <laughs> Hi, Joan. Look forward to learning from you the different aspects of communication, especially the EFT tapping. Oh. Uh, so, welcome. Yeah, welcome. Okay. So, I have a friend in town, and um, her, the timing was incredible because it just got this giant. And um, I know Susie probably has a truck and you might have a little truck envy. I just got this amazing truck and I've always had in mind this exact horse trailer that I want, a three horse gooseneck. And um, I thought my horse trainer and my old horse trainer told me, she's not old though, she's just used to be my horse trainer, um, told me that um, it was not going to be easy to get that exact trailer. And I came home from a dinner in um, Hollywood, which I drove my truck into Hollywood because all my friends had to see it. And um, I 
came home, it was about 10 or 11 at night, and I just went on to Marketplace, and there was the trailer. So anyway, my trailer, my truck is in for a tow package, and tomorrow we're driving up to San Luis Obispo, and hopefully this is the one. And um, so hold space that we come together and connect, and I will, everybody is having such relief that I could get out of here now with a fire. Um, and not only that, I could get out of here. That makes me want to cry. I can get out of here. I can go dump all my animals somewhere and I can come back and pick up. I mean, there's always, there's great services around here. Unbelievable that have always been on standby for me. And my trainer is always like, she's like, I'm hooking up now. Like I've, I've actually done a, a dry run by accident when a fire was not that close, but we panicked and, um, I was out of town. I was teaching at Edgar Casey and, um, my horses spent the night at the trainer's house and my dogs and cats spent the night and Abby took a shit in someone's room um, at my house sitter's ex-roommate's house. So when we went to Big Bear, Abby took a big old shit in the Airbnb anyway. And Claudia and I have experienced her just pooping right in the middle of Petco. But anyway, so that's what happens when you evacuate. But uh, anyway, I can evacuate now. Hopefully this is the trailer. And um, I have a seasoned trailer professional that's going to help me drive it home tomorrow. Um, uh, Susie says she has, uh, she says, I love my S150 4 by 4 with Matt Danny tow package. His name is Thor. <laughs> Thor. So mine, Susie, is named Boss Lady. And when I'm driving, I get to be the boss. And so it, she's part of the uh, Divine Feminine Collective that is cooperative. So tomorrow... When Christina's driving the trailer back, she'll be the boss. Anyway, I want to introduce my friend, Christina Drake. She is a dressage trainer, but she took a little and became a special ed teacher. But now she's back working with, um, she's teaching summer camps at a, a hunter jumper barn up in Seattle called Legacy. She uh, rides a Grand Prix horse and you're going to judging program oh i'm i, I you're re, finished yeah redoing it yeah I re anyway it. Yes. i wanted to bring christina on hi christina hi can you see yourself i can okay um so i can't well you know what our chairs are far apart but there we go i can look okay. a little um so anyway i wanted to bring Christina on because she has started out as a client in the 90s. I used to live down in um, uh, Los Angeles, which I'm outside of LA now, and I would fly up to Seattle and uh, go talk to a million animals and stay with my parents while they were still alive. And um, Christina was one of the places that I always had a, a stop off at and then eventually we became good friends, and she came down and visited me when I moved to Florida. We visited in Denver. Then I moved to Seattle, and she went back to school. Um, but we've, you know, we've been circling the planet, so to speak. Um, but I thought it'd be fun for people, especially people that want to become, you know, professional animal communicators or are in the program or have graduated, just to hear what it was like from a horse trainer's perspective to work with an animal communicator, specifically me, but yeah. It, well, and even when I first met you and even just a few weeks ago, yeah. um, you helped me again. But what I, uh, as a horse trainer and, a, hor and, a, and a, a, a lover of all animals, I always had a feeling or a hunch like, hush, this doesn't seem right. This doesn't feel right. But I could, there's no pain. There's no heat. There's no swelling. There's no, nothing I could really put my hands on. And Joan always, I'm like, I feel like there's something going on in the right hind or whatever. And Joan would just tell me, she's like, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's here. And so she gave me a lot of confidence in my own intuition, but also a ton of information based on that little hunch I had. Because then I could either call the vet, start massage therapy, do a different training program, you know, do more hill work. Just, I, I was able to formulate a better training program for the horses based on your information. And you worked with me also because yeah. you're a rider. 
Yeah. So it's not like you don't know about writing. So it was really, really powerful. And we worked a lot with a lot of clients together. And then also even just Pickle, um, your horse now, your Grand Prix horse, who I got to ride, um, he... Uh, I picked up on a bunch of stuff on the left side, and then she told me that what? How did he injure himself? He had a. Um, he's owned by Cheryl Keefe, and I lease him. And she, uh, uh, when she first got him, she had a. He got his hind leg over the butt bar, of the horse trailer. So he was like hyper extended, and hung up. Mm. And so he got pretty messed up. And it took a long time for him to recover. He's 26 years old right now. He's a rock star. And he looks like he's 12. But, and he just, he has, he has some issues on that side. And so she, I didn't, I never talk about like, okay, Joan, here's what's going on with this horse. I just say, here you go. Here's the horse. Because he had a suspensory. That was more what you were. And it was like, no, that's healed. It's this old thing is what's still up. And that, and then it was fun for me, which I never, well, okay, I've sometimes just hopped on people's horses, like Shannon, I hopped on prize. Um, anyway, I, so it was fun for me to ride him later because I could feel exactly what I told you. Right. And that was fun because I don't get to experience that. And then we got to talk about it some more. Yeah, then we got to talk about <laughs> it. And we talked about it last night. Again. Because adult beverages. Because we're horse obsessed. Yeah. So mm -hmm. that's just the way it goes. Um. And anything else about for the animal communicator, communicators of the future, isn't it? It's fun to work together. It is. And also with your massage therapists, with your chiropractors, your other health pra therapists, pr practitioners that help your horses or help your animals. It's just, it, it, it makes it's it a, a holistic village. thing, yeah. right? Yeah, yeah, it's a very holistic thing. And she just um, was where she's... Um, teaching summer camp and she calls the older kids the minions that make the younger kids learn everything <laughs> um, anyway we got to hear all about it. Um, it so she ran into Lola who we had on as a guest a few weeks ago Lola would, is a massage therapist at that fancy hunter jumper barn there so that was really fun that you saw Lola mm -hmm. and Lola said she had so much fun with me so it's like it also becomes a really small world and you really do, it just becomes so complete. Yeah, it's a trusted network. Yeah, that's a great way of saying it. Yeah. Yeah, and it's really important when we're working with our animals. Yeah. That we do have that trusted, because there's so many other things that aren't trustworthy. Right. Right. So that gives me peace of mind. Yeah. Yeah. All right, thank you. Thank you for having me. Yeah. Good luck, everybody. All right. Okay, Jill, I just want to add really quick that Shannon jumped on and said, and thanks to this, Jill, to this and Joan, thanks to Joan and learning to do this work myself, Prize is now almost 30 and looks and feels like a teenager. Well, mm -hmm. right? Apparently I can't read today. <laughs> mm. So, yes. Okay. As, and I'd love to hear any other, yeah, you, you may, you may leave the set. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Christina. But I need paper, so I'm, I'm leaving the set, too. <laughs> uh, hold on. Hold on, everybody. Uh, recycled paper and a pen. You have what you need? I have what I need. Thank okay. Um, okay. Can I get you anything? No, I'm good, but thank you. Oh, all right. I wrapped my foot so well, it's not even hurting now. That big piece of glass is on its way out, people. Out, out, damn spot. Okay, that's from Lady Macbeth. That is Lady Macbeth from Macbeth. Um, what? I have a feeling this is, we have so many that we're gonna have to go next week, and then we've got oh, we'll have a guest yeah. the following week. Yeah. I'm, I'm not seeing them or, or hold on, we got no comments. On them. Did anyone have any comments about our Christina conversation? Yes, hold on. Susie Reed says, I'm trying to teach the trainers I know the value of communication. They contact me for massage and then do a well on communication. I will win in the end, she says. You will. You will for sure. Um, okay, good morning. I have a 
trying to go through and see. Up to the top? Yeah. But I wrote down, so we, I have a list. I think we're going to need um, another Yeah, we'll session. do next week and then... Some Claire, tri- you give us that's... the information. Right. Um, <coughs> sorry. <coughs> Until Claire responds about the, the name of the cat, the age of the cat, and how long she had the cat for, mm-hmm. uh, we're going to go with Denise and Darby. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Darby, um, she's had him since... Let's see. Uh, since he was 13 months old, <clears throat> and um, she got him in uh, March of 2019. And would he like for them to find another dog to live here with? To live oh. there with them. Um, you know what? I hear my dog doing something naughty in the house, so I will be right back. Uh, okay. Well, you can talk. You can read comments. Oh. Oh. No. Oh. 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 So my sense with Darby is that in many ways, I mean, the first thing he said is, I'm very complete. Um, Mm -hmm. And he said that he has a lot of stuff going on. Um, So so my take on that would be, you know, he feels very, he feels Mm -hmm. very loved at home, connected to you, um, secure with you, with your relationship. Um, he still has some things that he's working through when I get that sense of I have a lot going on, but he's, he's very good and he loves to do the right thing. Even if he doesn't know what it is, he's just going to put himself out there like that situation that we dealt with, um, through the tapping, which again, I'd love for you to share, but my sense is he would love a companion. I, I feel like he... If for no other reason, he'd have somebody to be above. Um, and I think that um, that in, you know, he above as in like, you know, there might be a little bit of a superiority thing. But also, I think he's got a real nurturing side to him. And that that's the sense I have is that there's um oh are you coming in here now um yeah so i think he would love someone else uh and and it was um it could be very fun and it would be fun you know that's something that would be fun to do in the advanced animal communication class on tuesdays we've got really great subjects today for the advanced people but um and today and tonight but um, you know, you can contact assist and I could get you in. It would be really fun to do that if there was a dog in mind and we could connect the two. Um, but I do think he'd be, it would be another level of completion. So that's my sense. Okay. And she did uh, comment on, um, what happened with Darby. Let, let's share that. Uh, so here we go. Sorry, the comments thing is doing something weird where it's not letting me reach the old comments. So 
bear with me, people. Uh, she says, I adopted Darby in March 12th of 2019. He was 13 months old. I was told he was, quote, unquote, high energy and that an adopter already returned him after a few days. Unknown to me, Darby had not had any opportunity to be socialized with animals or people before I adopted him. Much, much love, attention, training, animal communication, and healing resulted in great improvement. But a major issue persisted. Darby tried to keep me from leaving the house without him by blocking the door, growling, and lunging. Joan recently tapped on both of us, and I can now leave the house without drama. Hooray. That's awesome. <laughs> that was big. She was a hostage, and now she's free. So anyway, um, and sometimes we become a total hostage to our animal's behavior, and that's a very powerful reason for something like the EFT, and even animal communication, just understanding why puts us in a different frame of mind. Anyway. And um, Cheryl asked, uh, she said she missed the beginning, what is the subject for the reading? Cheryl today? was somebody that was, uh, had wanted to have a reading done. Yes. Okay. So that's, I'm, I'm looking for, sh okay, but Claire, because Claire was the, uh, we'll yeah. do Claire. Okay. Um, Claire, her kitty cat, Cleo, um, I can't find the first comment where she said when the kitty cat died, but uh, died at age 20. I'm trying to find the comment. I want to say it's not letting me go all the way back. Well, she feels like she was an amazing kitty. Um, one of the first things she said, um, it, she was very beautiful, it seems. Um, and I think you said that in one of the posts. Um, but she also, she was this, she was very graceful. Um, and it feels like, I don't know if she'd had a rough past or what it was, but it just feels like, through all of that, no matter what she was faced with, she maintained grace. And um, even if she was badass, and I think, you know, at some point she'd been a hunter, I mean, or a huntress. Um, but even through all of that, there was, there was grace involved, and there was grace involved with her passing. Um, she said she held her own with lots going on. It feels like that um, there were times when I don't know if you had high stakes drama going on or there were other animals that were creating drama, to, but I just, I see like this little, almost like she had like a little, not a China doll face, but just like a poor, like she just maintained a look through, like there was a storm around her at times. 
Um, and in, in her being that, she was, she taught, I taught Claire a lot about navigating energy and balance. I was able to live that out because she was so gracious. So it feels like you guys were a really great exchange of, of, of grace with and for each other. Um, and that, um, she, um, she comes back often and it feels like with other stuff you've had going on, it's like she likes to sprinkle balance, she said. Like every now and she's like, oh. Um, so I don't know if you are like trying to navigate something new right now, but feels like she's in there, comes in and checks in. So um, yeah, she feels like she was an amazing cat. while we wait for Claire to respond. Did Denise um, say anything about what we said? Does she have a dog in mind? We're looking for a companion for Dark. That's exciting. Yes, it is. Um, uh, Cheryl, you do not need to repost it. I found it. Uh, please tell me I can access it. Hold on. Oh dear. There it is. Uh, Cheryl has a, oh, I love Mastis. Titan, he's an eight-year-old Mastiff. Mm -hmm. okay, the name and the Mastiff. She's had him since he was 10 weeks old. He lives with Cheryl and her husband and a female dog named Athena and two outside cats. And he's having medical issues. Do you want me to tell you or? Okay, uh, he's having major issues with his rear legs mm -hmm. and bad with his right, left, front. Right front leg or left front? It says right leg front. Right left front leg, so. Okay, well, um, even through all that he's going through and he feels you worried, he said, I am no ordinary guy. Like he is just this, he lives up to his name. And it feels like not only does he live up to his name, but uh, as far as like, he's magnificent and he's big, uh, but he's very sweet. And I think he would do anything for you and it feels like he's a very powerful guy and he's been a very powerful guy in your life. Um, and so I know it's very hard to see him at eight be, um, have all this go on. So where I get stuff going on and I feel like some of it could be genetic, but some of it, I feel like it happened in, um, when he was very young playing, I feel like he had a spinal twist mid back. And I'm sure if you put your hand there, um, you would feel a difference in temperature from 
the rib cage in front toward the shoulder and the hips. So right in there is like a little and what happens is that drops the sacrum and then it brings almost like the left hip twists under and then as a result he puts weight unnaturally on the inside of the hind left foot so that becomes like even weirder um and and not that his right hind isn't without its own challenges but it's it, it's powering through um and and it feels like because of that twist it also it's sort of my guess is if you watched him running the left front is over to or the the front legs are a little to the left of the hind legs so he's not straight even running um and you know it's almost like you would see it if you had like snow you would see almost like they were two separate dogs because the twist is so significant and the um the angle of where that left hip falls and my guess is also the front tracks a little wider than the hind tracks because that hip um and so it would be a lot of unwinding um it, it also it feels like the head you know you almost want to take the head and just like take it each direction the head is is definitely in there um almost like it's just the he leads with his head i mean there, there's no other way to put it because he's powering on those two front legs and that right hind um the neck is pretty locked um i almost wonder if he didn't have a little bit of a, a shoulder th <clears throat> thing to begin with um at some point oh, please tell me that isn't a bug in my water I have a bug in my water. I'm not drinking that. Although, I'm not drinking it here, but if I didn't have this going on, <laughs> we all know I would. Um, like, I've never had wine with a moth in it. Anyway, um, so, um, <laughs> sorry. She just fell out of the camera. <laughs> um, Yeah, so I'm not turning red or anything. Um, so anyway, that's it. Um, I hope that helps. And I, I feel like there's lots of ways, you know, I know of lots of ways to help. Of course, I don't offer advice unless I'm asked for it. Um, but I feel like there's a lot of little hands-on things that even you could do yourself. Um, and so, and you know, wow, what a small miracle that we have all these, we happen to have an acupressure part of the school. Um, so, um, yeah, there, I think there's lots of little things you can do. I mean, I can, I have my five favorite acupressure points were built because of my dog, Olivia, who had similar but different pattern um, she'd had a, um, an injury in front before she was half border collie, quarter German shepherd, a quarter Rottweiler, and she had the Rottweiler hips. And so the, my favorite acupressure points came out of helping her and my little hands on work that I just routinely did every day. Um, I think kept her going and Jill Todd, you know, the vet Jill who's about to graduate. Um, yeah, so there, <clears throat> I think there's lots you can do. And I'm she happy. says, I'd love to hear all of your advice. <clears throat> so the first thing I would do would be, oh, weird, I have a CBD company too, huh? Um, CBD would be awesome. We've got a lot of stuff with dynamite that's awesome. 
Not that the clay would help, but here we go. Um, I Cranial sacral would be my first thing, along with acupuncture and acupressure, like creating a routine for yourself that you do every day. Um, even the bladder sweeps that um, we do in the energy healing, um, where you go from the top of the head to the end of the tail and then the top of the head down to the bladder meridian ends on the outside toe of the hind feet. So sweeping along to the end of the tail, sweeping down each leg, hind leg, um, would connect him up better front to back. You just wanna always be looking at how am I connecting that front to back and back to front? Because, you know, I've learned this as a horse person, how much they disconnect, but now I see it as a, you know, a dog and cat person, and it's all the same. Um, so y you want to always be finding ways to keep it connected, because I think the disconnect is mid, mid back. And so you've almost got two different a different front end than you have back end. Like I said, front end is probably a wider stance and the hind end is probably more together with, um, and I think like front legs are tracking like that. Like they're not tracking like that, they're tracking like that. So, um, you know, and I'll, I'll think about it more and we'll be in class, so, um, and you can always just, Call me. So there you go. Yeah. And, uh, um, Did that help? Yeah, I was going to ask. And then uh, while we wait for Cheryl to respond, Claire Trust says, thank you so much, Joan. Yes, she was utterly graceful and everything to me during her life. I so much appreciate your communication. Mm -hmm. She okay. was amazing. Yeah, we're hmm? Yeah. Uh, Cheryl says you did have an injury at a young age and now that he is getting older it's all coming out you nailed it amazing yes awesome. yeah yeah well and you know what I mean I have the therapy plate here in the garage classroom can't stop saying that I have a therapy plate that would really help oh yeah I have a bunch of weird machines here um, so I, I don't I can't remember how far you are. I know it's not close, but it's not terribly far. And, you know, we're out of class. I I am going to visit my brother at some point, but, you know, when we're out of class in August, even, yeah, it's, um, the TheraPlate's really powerful. Mm -hmm. So, eventually, when I get everything complete, it will be down there. And then you could come use it and you wouldn't even have to, like, there will be a separate entrance for the healing center. But um, not today. <laughs> you have to pull all the way up to the house. Um, so, yeah, there's lots of things you can do. And the acupressure alone. If you came and did the TheraPlate, I could show you all my points. We would just sit and do it together. Um, okay. Okay. Anyone? Uh, what time is it? We're done. We don't have okay. any more time. Okay, so <laughs> we're going to finish. We're going to pick up where we left off next week, and then we're going to do something completely different the week after that. But for now, this was really fun. I loved it. I have to go teach a class. We have a good one today. We have a good ones. We have a bunch. The 11 a.m. class is big, and so is the 5 p.m. class. So I got to get to work. I gotta go to work. I've gotta go to my day job. All right. Bye, okay. Everybody. Bye.